is David Young, and welcome to New Realities. And this is a very special Christmas Eve special. And I haven't done a Christmas Eve special, but I thought I would because you um, did that music as part of this movie mm -hmm. that you're a part of Village of Dreams. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking to David Young, who's a musician, he's a filmmaker, he's a writer. And tell me about this particular project, Village of Dreams. Well, I met the owner of the world's most famous Christmas store, the Wolfhart Christmas Store in Rathenburg, okay. Germany. There's like 75 stores all over Europe. Mm -hmm. And um, he wanted me to come and play at his store. It's 10,000 square feet, and it's, uh, it's like the North Pole on Earth. Mm -hmm. And so we made an arrangement. He bought 4,000 CDs mm -hmm. with the intention of me coming for three weeks and playing there. So I was playing in this... He bought 4,000 CDs of what? Of your other music? Of my Christmas music. Of your Christmas... Oh, you yeah. already had Christmas music. Yeah, I, had you... I have five Christmas CDs. Oh, oh, oh. So he bought your Christmas music. He, he found you. He yeah. found you, right? In Atlanta at the gift show. Oh, I see. And then he invited you to Germany. Yeah, so this way I would perform in the world's biggest Christmas store and he could sell his 4,000 CDs that he bought for me. But while you're there, you said, let's... You, you, this, this um, story came to you. Well, while I was there, I, I was thinking, you know, this is the ultimate Christmas place in the world. It's in Bavaria. It's, you know... What's it look like, this store? Well, it looks... This is downtown. That's the actual store? The yeah. town? Well, this is the town. It, if you would just imagine what the North Pole looks like, that's what it looks like. <laughs> okay, really. And so I was playing at the store, and after... You know, there were zillions of tourists because that's the most popular place where people in Europe go for Christmas because this town is, it's a medieval town. It's just What's incredible. What's the name of the town? It's called Rothenburg. And is it near like Fussen and Freiburg? It's in Bavaria. It's in Bavaria. Yeah. So it's like right in between Stuttgart and Frankfurt and Munich, right oh. in the middle in the mountains. It's, it's gorgeous. Is it near the Disneyland Castle? Disney. It's an hour north of that castle. Um, yeah, New Schwanstein. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Okay, so you're there in the yeah. store in the town. Yeah, and I'm and I'm playing that. I'm thinking, you know, this would be an amazing place to make a music video. Yeah. You yes. know, because I mean, you know, when you see the film, it, it's a beautiful place. Well, how can people get the film? Because... Um, well, the film is on Netflix. Yeah. You can get it on Netflix, you know. Okay. Um, you can also get it through my website, davidyoungmusic.com, if you like. Village of um, Dreams. Yes. Village. And so... This little idea that I had of making a music video. Yeah. Then we thought, well, why don't we make a bunch of music videos of me in Bavaria, all in these incredible towns and this playing your music, playing my music in that area. And what happened was that we filmed like about ten music videos. Uh -huh. Of course, it was in the middle of the winter and it was freezing. Who's filming it? What crew? Oh, we had this amazing crew. We had the best crew. We had in a Munich. German crew. Yeah. Yeah, I was the only American on the on the whole thing, which was quite an experience. But so you didn't direct it; you wrote it. No, we, I wrote it. So in the beginning, there was no writing because it oh. was just, you know, me playing music in all these beautiful medieval villages, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. But um, what happened was that after editing all of these music videos, I thought it would be better if there was a story that attached all these music videos. So this way, it would be more. Um, it would be more interesting to watch instead of just a bunch of beautiful music videos. Mm -hmm. There would be a story. So basically, right. um, we wrote this story, and the funny thing is that we were this thing was being filmed for months and worked on for months before we could actually agree for what the big part of the plot was, which is kind of funny. Mm -hmm. um, we knew that there was a boy, and that and that a this young child, this young. little boy. Mm -hmm. We, we needed a good reason why the angel of music, I play the angel of oh, music okay. in the story. Okay. And we needed a real powerful reason why the angel of music comes to see this little boy. Okay. okay. And we couldn't agree on it. Okay. And so this thing was being already filmed and already, st we hadn't filmed the dialogue which told mm -hmm. the story, but mm -hmm. we had all this stuff that we'd been working on for three months. This is a pretty funny story. So what happens is f we get to a point where we have to agree mm -hmm. You and the filmmakers me, and the owner of the store. Me and the owner of the store had to agree on why does the angel of music come see this boy. And I wanted to just have it that, you know, there was no music left in the world, mm. you know. And that's why this little boy loved music. And 
he wouldn't agree to that because, you know, Rothenburg is this beautiful town, and he didn't want his town to be represented that it was the only place in the world without okay. music, you know, from a tourism point okay, of view. so what did he want? Well, he, want, he didn't have any ideas, but he just didn't like that idea. Okay. So what happened is that while we were filming in the wintertime, he had gotten this incredible ear infection. Mm. And it, it was so bad that he went to the hospital as like, he, they had a bandage up his head like a mummy, you know. Wow. And so he started coming onto the set dressed, you know, when winter closed, but his head was completely wrapped up because he had this terrible ear infection, wow. you know. And finally, w you know, we couldn't wait another week because we had to start filming the dialogue and we had to agree. So I was so frustrated on us not being able to agree on anything. So I, out of frustration, I said, well, why don't we just make the kid deaf? Because, you know, Harold looked like he was, might be going yeah. deaf because yeah. of, of this terrible ear infection. Right. And he said, okay. <laughs> it was so funny because I was just really so saying So the little boy is deaf. So the little boy, he loses his hearing in a winter accident. Okay. So an angel of music is sent to teach the boy the golden keys so he can get his hearing, his hearing back. Okay, and how does he get his hearing back? Well, he has a healing from the angel of music. So you're playing the recorder, he's listening to it, and... Yeah, he has, I basically, I'm an angel in the music. Right. So he, first he has to realize, well, what did he, he had to learn something from it. You know, uh -huh. because, then this, it's interesting, but this leads to intuition. My book about intuition yes, called Yes, your book, Divine which I guidance. really want to talk about, too. Right. So, yeah, but... So, so the way this all connects yeah. is because, you know, he was playing soccer with his friends. Yeah. And the ball gets kicked and it goes out on the ice. And as he goes out on the ice to get the ball, he hears this angel's voice that says, don't go out on the ice. Oh. But he sees his friends and he wants to be cool for his friends. And so he, he runs out on, actually walks out onto the ice mm -hmm. to get the ball. And he hears that inner voice again telling him not to go out oh, on the ice. Oh, I see. You know, then the ice breaks, he falls in, in the water. And, you know, he gets pneumonia and he loses oh. his hearing. So and he that's all in the film, too. That's all in the film. And so he... Oh. Um, and he the hearing the inner voice is in the film, too. Exactly. Oh. And so he wants to be a musician, and now he can't be a musician oh. because he's lost his that's hearing. That's a great story. Wow. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so he meets you on his journey. So what happens yeah. is that he's dreaming. Okay. And his mom teaches him, you know, if, if you want God to grant a miracle in your life, mm -hmm. you need to make sure you use the three golden keys. Yeah. And so the kid says, well, what are the three golden keys? Yeah, I was going to ask you myself. Do you want me to tell yeah, you? Yeah, I can tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll be happy to tell no, you. please. And I'll watch the movie anyway. <laughs> but no, tell me. So the three golden keys are anytime you ask God for anything, mm -hmm. it has to be true, it has to be necessary, and it has to be kind. Mm -hmm. It has to be true because, you know, it has be right. based on something true. It has to be necessary. It can't be just a fri frivolous gift like that I you're... Like I want a, like a, you know... A lollipop or something or, or, silly. Or a you know? Mercedes or... Yeah, yeah. Or Some okay. Lollipop or Mercedes. Yeah. Same thing. Same yeah. thing, right. <laughs> okay. And it has to be kind because it can't hurt anybody. Right. You know, you can't ask God to go... Mm -hmm you know, kill your enemies, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? This is something you've come up with in your own... Well, this was actually something that I learned in Eckenkart, believe oh, it or not. Yeah, that's the, the teaching that yeah, I had been the studying. spiritual teaching, okay. And so I incorporated that, so I made a spiritual mm -hmm. Christmas movie. Yeah. And so he, his mom teaches him that he has to ask for the three, with the three golden keys. Mm -hmm. So he does, and he basically falls into like this altered state, this dream. Uh -huh. And in this dream, the angel of music comes into his dream, and... Um, and he can hear in the dream. Yeah, he can hear in the dream. Ah. And so I communicate with him and I play play with him and I, I teach him different things and I teach him that, you know, when that inner voice speaks to you. You gotta listen. You gotta listen. Because it doesn't matter what you're doing, what you're saying, you gotta hear that still small voice. Right, and so because he learns his lesson from that, uh, you can only guess if he gets his hearing back. I think, I think. <laughs> I think I hope he does. No, I think he does. But what's the lesson he learns? He learns how to listen to himself. Yeah, because he learns to listen to that inner voice. Because when we listen to that inner voice, beautiful, magical things happen. Yeah. Like you've, everybody's heard the story that they have um, the parking space angel. Mm -hmm. Like you've heard the story. Okay, 
people are driving looking for a parking space. And I think this works just about anywhere except Manhattan. No, it does work. It here. works in Manhattan? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you have to talk, good. You have to talk a little louder in Manhattan to your parking angel. Yeah, speak over the, <laughs> the humdrum of yeah, the, all the, the traffic. And all that. You know? yeah. So um, when so, you're asked, it's you know, shall like be you given. Ask, you ask God or your parking angel or whatever you connect with, you know, God, I need your help. I, if, I'd like to have a parking space so this way I can, you know, get on with my day and do what I need to do. Oh, you, you know? have to explain that. You have to tell him you have to get on with your day. You just don't want it, something Yeah, because close. he doesn't know if you're just like... Yeah, because you have to be true around. and good and <laughs> honest and clean. Right. So, okay, so that's a good lesson. The movie's great as a lesson in vehicle. So how does that connect to the ideas that you put into this book, Divine Inner Guidance and Intention and what we... So we have intention where we speak to God and then there's the voice where God speaks to us, sort of. And, right. and, and, and how do we create that dialogue? Well, we create the dialogue by by meditating and learning to hear that mm. inner guidance in simple little things. Like how? It could be a simple thing like, well, where should I go to find a parking spot today? Mm -hmm. Or it could even be in creativity. Like when you're in that creative mode, you're really downloading the, the divine mm -hmm. into you. So it's like the voice is actually speaking through you. Yeah, you learn to listen to it in simple things. Mm -hmm. So then when the big important things happen, you've, you've had some training to listen to it. And that's one of the things I talk about in the book because there's 28 short stories from my life of traveling all over uh -huh. the world and playing music and, and all the magical, incredible things that happened when I listened to my intuition. And it also has all the incredible things that happened when I didn't listen mm -hmm. to my intuition. Listening, though, is a sort of lifetime process. I mean... Yeah. Learning to listen, learning to hear what they call the still small voice. Mm -hmm. And it may, it's not always logical. It may take you in directions, and I'm sure you talk about, yeah. that made no sense at all. I'm so glad you said that yeah. because at least half of the time it's not logical. Like, like tell me one story in your life where, like, you know, it didn't make any sense to do what you were doing. And then, boom, something magical unfolded. Um, the mountain. The mountain. The story on the mountain. Is that the story? Getting lost. Getting lost. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Glad we have some uh, yeah. help. Uh, some angels. Yeah. On that scene. was an angel because I was going to tell another story that no, wasn't no. going to be pretty. No, so, no, tell me um, that story. So I was basically um, driving from Minneapolis to Los Angeles. Yeah. This was 1990. Um, I was 30. And I was driving across the country. I get to Arizona. And I'm looking on my map. And it's like the highway is going like this and then down like this. And as I'm looking on the map, I see this little road that looks like it's heading right across. And it looked like it was a shortcut. Mm -hmm. And my mind was saying, you're going to save two hours of driving if you cut down this way instead of driving all the way across and then all the way down. And the inner voice said, don't do it. Right. Well, about 10 minutes later, I had to get gas, so I get off at this gas station. and you I You went on the road. Yeah, I'm, I'm driving. On the road that your I haven't boss got there told yet. you not to. No, I haven't got oh, there oh, yet. Oh, oh, I'm, just, I'm still on the ahead. highway. Okay. It's coming up. And, I, and I, there was this little old lady at the gas station. I said, ma'am, I'm looking at my map, and I have to get down here to Flagstaff. And it looks like if I take this little road going across here, it looks like it's, I could save myself two hours. And she said, don't do it. <laughs> and then the weird thing about it was that her voice sounded like the same way that That's my inner voice funny. had told me That's 10 minutes funny. earlier. Well, so I'm driving. I get back on the road. I'm driving. And I get to the exit. I'm like, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? Now, mm -hmm. I can give you a clue. Anytime you ever think, what's the worst that can happen? It's never as it's, bad as you that's, could <laughs> It's always worse than you ever yeah, dreamed of. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So anyway, I thought, all right, I, I could use a little adventure. I'm going to get off here. Well, I get off the highway. When I get off the highway, I had a big water jug that was in the um, passenger seat. Mm -hmm. That water jug, when I made the turn to get off the highway, came flying over and hit me in the head. That was another sign. Yeah, but I didn't see you it. You have to you know? get hit over the head a few times. So... I start following this little road, and the road starts going up. I'm thinking, this is interesting. You know, and the road turns into a dirt road. Mm -hmm. And it ends up being this road that went up in a state park that was like 7,000 feet above sea level. It was so high, 
a blizzard started, mm. and as I was driving through this thing, I could look down the mountain. It was so, I was so high up, I couldn't even see the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I had, I didn't have snow tires on my car. I had a little red Plymouth Duster, mm. and which was not a big car, you know. And the more I drive, the more I realize, oh my God, I've put my life in jeopardy. Because this, this is a mountain road going around the top of the mountain like you'd see in the James Bond movie, you know. And I started getting really scared mm -hmm. because, you know, my car was in no way mm -hmm. capable of driving through this. And then I start seeing these signs if you don't have, you know, um, yes. chains on your tires, you know, don't even think of going here, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like starting to panic because it's snowing so hard. You I know can't what's see. a secret? I was caught in a snowstorm with no snow tires. This little old mechanic said, take half the ear, air out of your tires and it'll grip the road. I'll right. tell you what, next time I'm on that mountain, okay. think You're about You're not that. going back to that mountain. Though. Never. So what happens? So what ends up happening? So I start really having a big talk with God, like, oh my God, if you, if you save me from this, because it was, it was terrible. I drove for three hours around this, this mountain mm -hmm. curvy thing. It was, mm -hmm. so, I mean, I prayed really hard, mm -hmm. you know, and finally, I get through this thing, I get back on a dirt, on a paved road, I drive another half hour, I get to a gas station because I had to get gas, I gas up, and I say to the lady, I need to get to Flagstaff, so if I just continue on this road down the mountain, that's going to take me to Flagstaff, right? She said, well, normally, yes, but there was a big ice storm last night, and a milk truck fishtailed off the road, and it's completely blocking the road, so you can't get through. I said, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. She says, you've got to go back the same way that you came. Wow. I, I gave that woman probably the most serious look I've ever given anyone <laughs> in my life. I said, there is no way mm. I'm driving three hours back where I just came. Wow. What else can I do? She says, well, I think you can take this other road down here to the left, and that'll take you back to the interstate. I said, thank you, God. Thank you, lady. Okay, so I get in my car, and now I'm centered again. I'm... I'm, I'm focused, I'm in tune, mm -hmm. I'm listening for every little nudge, you know, so I drive 45 minutes mm -hmm. to get back to the highway, Yeah. you know, I get back to the highway, I start heading south, and now I'm hungry, mm -hmm. so I'm talking inwardly to God and the Holy Spirit, it's Great good Spirit, whatever. God was driving with you that day. You're not kidding. <laughs> so I, I, I say, God, I'm hungry, should I, should I get off at this exit? Mm -hmm. And this in, soft inner voice says, no. So I drive another 10 miles. So you listen then. Oh, I'm really listening. After okay. that experience, of course Probably. I was, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so I drive another 10 miles. The next exit was coming up. I said, God, should I get off at this exit? Nope, this one isn't for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so I drive another. So it really fine-tuned your awareness. Yeah, yeah. That it was good practice. Aw awful experience. Yeah, yeah. I get to the next exit, and I say, God, is this my exit? And the, this beautiful, soft voice said, yes, this is the exit for you. And right as that I get off that exit, there's a restaurant called the Jackass Cafe. Mm. And I really needed to see what a stupid thing I had done by not trusting the inner voice. Mm -hmm. And I put, really, I put my life in, in so, danger. So do you know? always listen now? Well, I wish I could say that every single time I get that nudge, I listen. I, I could say that I listen most of the time. Because I try to listen to that. I mean, if I'm even walking down a street sure. and it says, no, go this way, that way, yeah. and it could be out of the way, I try to listen or watch the movement of birds. You can read yeah. the signs in the cosmos for what's happening. Too. Well, I listen most of the time. Yeah. You know, every once why in a while. Why would you not listen? I'll tell you why. Yeah. Why? Because the human consciousness, when things are going so good, mm -hmm. your ego gets in the way and it's like, Everything's going so good. You know, you you don't need to listen to it. And that's like the negative power tricking you. Yeah, but now you know, that after you all know that, that, yeah. You see, well, I listen like, most, of, most of the time. Why would you not? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm just being honest. No, you know no, I, mean? I know, I know. But I mean, it's like, yeah, we, we get hit on over. I mean, we just, boom. I mean, I think we're dedicated to listening to that. I mean, it's not always easy. So listen to because here. sometimes it goes against your common sense. Right. And it, it does a lot of times. Yeah, and because where spirit is coming from, it's coming above the mental level. Yeah, become above logic, above linear right. thought. But I know we're human and we um, something looks good and right. we go and we may say no and some part of us says no, but you say, oh, what's what's wrong with this? And then it's like, you know, the unique yeah. thing about it is that when we want to do something and we get that feeling that spirit is saying, mm-mm, right. we feel like 
we're, something's being taken away from us. Like there's that human part of it, well, I wanted that. Yeah. You know? And it feels like we're losing yeah. something. But you but don't we'll, realize something bigger, yes. Well, we don't realize, the human part of us doesn't realize that we're, what spirit is doing is trying to give us something that's a benefit for us. Mm -hmm. Um, because we just can't see that far down the road exactly. and to see the complications of, but you know what I wanted to say is that, you know, listening to our intuition now is, is different than it was 200 years ago or How's even that? 100 years ago. Why do you say that? Or let's just say it's 150 years well, ago. How, why do you say that? Yeah. I'll tell you, let, let's say, let's say we're, we were an American Indian in that, mm -hmm. in that lifetime, mm -hmm. right? As a kid, you are taught as an American Indian because you're out in the woods. Mm -hmm. There's no traffic lights. There's no police. Right. You're out there in the woods. It's you, the trees, the bears, the snakes, the mountain lions, everything so else. So the voice was... You're taught right from the time you're a little kid. To listen. If you don't listen to that voice, you're going to be lunch. So it was easier then than it is now. Well, it was more immediate of life and death that if you didn't listen to it... Mm. You, you, you're done. Right. So we had out, to, Yeah, we had know, to. When we just had this blackout in New York and the electrical um, mm. circuits were shut, there was a more of a quiet, I noticed, in the rooms I was in that had no electric current. And I think it's easier to listen to that quietness or whatever comes through when there's no outside even vibration that's yeah. coming in and you're left with yourself. So I, I think you're right. As we sit with this quiet part that we can separate what they say in remote viewing, the noise from the signal. The signal is the voice and the noise is what your conscious mind is wanting it to be. Mm. So in remote, in remote viewing, as you tune into a target, you're tuning into what they say is the thing you don't know. Not the familiar images, not the familiar sounds. That voice comes out and says something that's like, oh, where did that come from? That's the voice, it seems like, in some of my experiences. Yeah, it's true. And that voice comes in all different forms. It's a feeling, too. It's yeah. like, oh, maybe I shouldn't walk in this room and talk to that person. And you say, oh, what's the big deal? And then... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what's the big deal is almost the same thing as what's the worst that could happen. Yes, <laughs> and then it always is that something that you Bam. didn't expect. So thank you, because it's a great reminder that there's a guidance and intuition we all have that we're here to follow through, and we don't know with our human logical mind where that can take us, but it will take us to greater places so this is what you kind of cover and this is yeah, like the that's what the book's the, all about the key mm -hmm. in that book so what's like how what do you think is the best way to really tune in is for people who, who have no idea what we're talking about well i guess anytime you want to get good at something yeah it's good to practice it okay so the more you communicate um and open yourself first of all you have to you have to be in a place of saying, well, is there something greater than myself mm -hmm. that could possibly help me and make my life be better? Right. Because if a person absolutely, you know, doesn't believe in, in anything greater than himself, mm -hmm. you know, God, spirit, whatever you want to call it, then, then, then that's a problem because mm -hmm. you have to believe that something knows more than you know, than well, we know. It's, it is us too. I mean, it's an aspect of us that's sure. on a higher level, you part. Sure. Yeah. But, right. Yeah. But, you know, you have to, you know, for somebody, it, because it's a relationship that you build. Mm -hmm. Like that, let's go back right. to that Native American boy. He right. goes out into the woods. He knows that the lions and the tigers and the bears mm -hmm. are much bigger than him. Mm -hmm. And the only way he's going to make it in that woods and back home to his family is if he trusts something greater than himself. And that trust is the knowing that we are connected to that bigger thing. Right. And, you know, creativity, we didn't really get to talk that much about it in this program, but it's always listening. Oh, let's move to this line here. Let's make mm -hmm. that note here. That's a direct connection to that voice. Yeah, because that's mm -hmm. another example of where the, you can do something artistically, whether it's with music or with artwork, where it doesn't seem logical. Like, like, like you could be working on a painting, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and that inner nudge says, grab burgundy. And right. you're thinking, 
why in the world would I grab burgundy? Mm. This is all blues, and it, it, burgundy doesn't go with any of this stuff. Why would I do that? Mm. And so then it gets quiet. Yeah. Because, you know, spirit's like, well, are you going to listen or not? Yeah. You know, and you can, you, we just have to keep trusting the right. pro We have to wrap up here because mm -hmm. I want to also show that little the piece clip. from, uh, just, just tell us what the clip is. Uh, we'll yeah, it's a 60-second clip from Village of Dreams, the Christmas movie. Well, thank you. This has been a very exciting... I've never done a Christmas special, but I'm very happy you were a guest here. And people can get Village of Dreams where? On Netflix. Just order Village of Dreams. and uh, or, or on my website, you know. DavidYoungMusic.com. Yep. David Young, the musician, the recorder of, of countless, almost, CDs. Countless. And also his book, Divine Wisdom. His Divine Inner Guidance. Oh, and Divine, you can get that on, Divine Inner Guidance, yes. on Amazon. Your intuition can transform your life. Thank you. This is Alan Steinfeld with David Young, musician, writer, screenplay writer, um, and what else? Artist. Mixer fi Mr. Fix-It. <laughs> but very skilled musician. Thanks for watching tonight. I'm Alan Steinfeld. You can email me at newrealities at earthlink.net, and you can watch my website, newrealities.com, or check that out. believe me, but I will never forget why I got this feeling.